Hello and welcome to the Week Ahead video with me, David Madden. Today's date is Thursday the 30th of May 2019 and the time has just gone 12.20 British Summer Time. And I'm looking ahead to next week, uh, which, which is Monday the 3rd of June until Friday the 3rd of June. Friday, Friday the 7th of June rather. Monday the 3rd of June until Friday the 7th of June 2019. Um, we have had a, quite a major move to the downside in equity markets uh, uh, this week. Um, trade tensions between the U.S. and China have really flared up. Uh, in the past couple, in the past say 24 hours, uh, we've seen tensions move uh, to probably the, probably the highest that they've been uh, in this trade escalation that, that's been going on for some time now. Um, the the threat of additional tariffs from from President Trump in the in the last few in the last few weeks. Has um, brought about a response. Finally, finally, we got a response from Beijing. Uh, Beijing have turned around and said that they might look to restrict uh, the export of, um, of rare earth metals, rare earth minerals to the U.S. And, they, and these are are, are are used in a wide range of industries, from electronics to renewable power uh, to the oil and gas industry. Um, and, and on top of that, uh, we've had the the vice um, the vice uh, the Chinese vice foreign secretary. Have, um, come out and state that the threat of tariffs from the U.S. Uh, is like a, is like a is like um, a threat of economic terrorism. So we had we've had a pretty harsh response from Beijing. Um, it's been reported that the U.S. are looking at ways of actually getting around, um, carrying on business as usual without being so be, some industries being dependent on these fresh on these uh, very rare earth minerals. And what we saw yesterday was, uh, you know, a fresh multi, you know, in some cases, multi-month lows uh, on major European markets. Um, it's also worth pointing out that, that the fear um, that is going on um, in in the um, in, in China is also coinciding with a kind of a new, um, a new potentially new political battle between the EU and Brussels. Sorry, between Brussels and Italy. Uh, the Italian government is running a budget deficit as quite a high level of debt. Um, and what we're seeing here is that we're, uh, we're, we're, we're hearing some comments from Brussels who are basically looking to kind of criti or criticising the Italian government. I want the Italian government to rein in their spending uh, and also rein in, rein in their, their debt level. And given that um, um, Matteo Salvini, who is the joint deputy prime minister of Italy and, the, and of the Liga party, which topped the polls uh, in the recent uh, European elections in Italy, he's, he's showing no signs of backing down. So Italy could be in. For a fine from Brussels, that's put pressure uh, on the Italian government bond market, which in turn has put pressure on the Italian banking system, and that's kind of rippled out across Europe as a whole. And speaking um, of the bond markets, um, what we've seen here is we've, we've seen a major, uh, a major, all this fear in relation to the US and China, and also the, the possibility of the fear about um, the financial debt situation kicking off in. Italy, uh, that's actually prompted traders to take their cash out of equities and put it into government bonds. Uh, we've seen the yield on the US 10-year government bond drop to a level not seen since September 2000 and, uh, 2017. Uh, we've also seen um, we've also seen a continuation. Uh, uh, German German uh, 10-year German bond is was, was already negative. It's got even further negative. Uh, so there's this clear uh, a clear uh, risk on risk uh, risk off sentiment at the moment. Uh, traders are clearly taking some cash out of stocks and plowing them into the bonds. And it's almost like the more the more time we see yields being driven lower and lower, the more nervous that makes some equity traders who remain in the equity market. So there's a lot of fear going on out there uh, at the moment. Um, looking ahead to next week, kind of, we have a number of uh, big, big events next week, but the really, ones, the really big ones to keep an eye out for uh, will be how, how things are going in the US economies. Uh, so on Wednesday, we have the Beige Book um, with the United States, which is essentially a kind of a rundown um, of, of the state of play of the US economy. Uh, the, most recent, the minutes from the most recent Fed, Fed meeting uh, suggest um, that the United States economy, the U.S. Federal Reserve are happy with the jobs market. They're happy with the growth, uh, and they're also, but they're, they're not, but they're not too crazy about the inflation level. So uh, there's, there's an indicate, there's a bit of fear amongst some Fed members that demand is a bit on the soft side. Uh, and I've also, in reference to what's going on in global trade, uh, on top of that, uh, there is a bit um, of, of kind of a sitting on the fence attitude, or at very least, kind of wait and see. So the Federal Reserve, from, judging by the recent comments. Uh, are showing no real signs um, of actually looking to, to move interest rates one way or the other. 
the, the, uh, the incredible push lower in U.S. government bond yields uh, would actually point to the markets are predicting uh, markets are predicting uh, the possibility of, a, of the Fed actually cutting rates uh, towards the back end of this year. So I give indication of what the financial markets are thinking, and that's obviously separate from what the Federal Reserve is saying. Uh, what, what should give us a good indication of, of the U.S. jobs market at the back end of the next week is the all-important non-farm payrolls report. Uh, non-farm payrolls, the U.S. jobs market is in strong position. Um, recently, it dropped to its lowest level of 50 years of unemployment rate of 3.6%. We're expecting that to, to tick up slightly to 3.7%, which isn't any, which, which wouldn't be any, any major harm. Um, in terms of the headline non-farm payrolls figure next week, we're expecting 190,000 jobs to be added um, for the, for the payrolls, which which was obviously which in, anything in around the kind of 200,000 mark per month is, is is deemed to be respectable, uh, and also the yearly. Um, average earnings figure is a, is a tip to remain unchanged at 3.2%. Um, the earnings component is actually become one of the larger components of the jobs report. Um, essentially, when workers earn more, they tend to go out and spend more. Uh, keeping in mind, headline inflation in the US is really about 2%, so, so workers are getting a, a, a nice, decent, real increase uh, in, in, uh, in pay. So there, so in terms of you know the, the really big issues to keep an eye out for, that's what you're going to keep an eye out for next week. Um, run quickly running through some of the other um, announcements that are out next week because uh, we also do have um, a, number, a, number, a number of other important updates. Uh, on Tuesday, Wednesday, we have the Reserve, Reserve Bank of Australia interest rate decision, retail sales, and on the Wednesday, uh, we have the Q1 GDP. There is talk uh, of the Reserve Bank of Australia cutting interest rates, so keep an eye out for that. On Tuesday, uh, we have full year figures from AO World. Uh, on Tuesday, we have first quarter numbers from uh, Salesforce, uh, the US company. Uh, on Tuesday and Thursday, um, from the Eurozone, we have the Eurozone CPI numbers out on Tuesday, and we have the Eurozone, uh, we have the European Central Bank meeting on Thursday. Rates are expected to be kept unchanged, but the commentary and the language that, that the European Central Bank is going to be of particular importance. Given what's going on uh, in, in the Eurozone, we've seen some evidence that inflation levels um, in place in countries like um, Spain and, and France have dropped, so, so that could be an indication of weakening demand. Any comments in relation to trade headwinds uh, could actually be, 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 be um, put, put, put downward pressure on the single currency. Um, on Wednesday, uh, we have full numbers from Workspace. On Wednesday, as I mentioned, we have, we have, the, we have the Beige Book. On Friday, uh, we have the non farm payrolls, as I mentioned. And on Friday, we also have the Canadian Jobs Report. So please keep an eye out for that. Uh, now, what I'll quickly do is take a look at some of the major markets and see other things that potentially play out over the next few days. So I'm starting off with the DAX. Because not only is the DAX a good barometer for, uh, for, for, uh, for global trade, given the, the heavy manufacturing that, that the German economy has, it's also in the Eurozone. And given that we have the Eurozone, um, Eurozone um, in, see inflation and uh, European Central Bank meeting next week. So this is a fairly common um, move that we've seen here between equity markets trading up the lows of December and the highs of, kind of April, May. It's in a solid, fairly, fairly solid upward trend. So the wider picture is to the upside on the DAX. But if you keep in mind, and this has been a common theme in the, for global equity markets in the last few weeks, we have seen a fairly um, decent move to the downside. So after hitting a multi-month high in May, we had a fairly sizable move to the downside, which, is, which could be construed as, as a lower low, a lower high, and a push uh, lower again. But notice how the lows of yesterday uh, we're pretty much in around the, in around uh, the lows of mid-May, and that level there coincides with in around the lows of mid-April and also the highs of mid, of early March. So this region here is going to be fairly important, and that comes into play in around eleven thousand eight hundred and twenty-three, there thereabouts. If we can hold above that metric and we can retake this blue line here, the fifty-day moving average, which was acting as decent support the last, uh, the last few weeks. If you can retake that, we can then look at kind of heading back up towards uh, the mid-May the mid high and then potentially look at retesting uh, the, the May high. But if you have a sizable break below this area here, then we then we we'll be down to uh, multi-month lows and it could take us back down towards this red line here, the 30 moving average, which comes to play at um, 11,630. Take a look now at what's going on at the S&P 500. It's a fairly similar situation with the S&P, whereby um, 
the market hit an all-time high uh, in, in May here, but notice we've had a sharp move to the downside in, in mid-May, we've had a rebound, and then, and then yesterday's move, yesterday I clearly check out uh, the mid-May low, so the big picture is to, is to the upside, but this could be the beginning of it, you know, we have seen a lower low, a lower high, and another lower low, and if you do manage to kind of press a lower from here on the S&P 500, should we have a size of break below this red line here, um, which comes to play at 2,775, 73. If you have a size of break below that, it could take us back down towards this area here, um, the, the early March low of 7,200, uh, sorry, seven, sorry, 2,722, 2,722. That's only really if you, if you retake this, this blue line here, the 50 moving average on the... Um, on the S&P 500 at uh, 28.71, uh, today we actually look at standing, retesting um, the mid, the mid March, the mid May high of uh, 2,892. And then lastly, what I'll do is have a look at the euro versus the uh, the dollar. Obviously, we got the um, ECB meeting next week, and we'll also have the non-farm payrolls. Uh, the, euro, the euro dollar has been in a solid downward trend uh, for the last number of months. Nice series of lower lows and lower highs. For the moment, there's fairly decent support in around the 1 spot 11.10 region. But we're not too far away at the moment. If you do have a break below that area, we could be retesting the kind of psychologically important 1, one spot 10 area. Any moves to the upside are likely to run into resistance in around this blue line here, the 5th day moving average, which comes into play in around 1 spot 20, uh, one spot 12.15. And a move beyond that could take us up towards this area here, um, the mid-April highs of in around 1 spot 1322. Well, that's all for me this week. Thank you very much. And if you any, actually, one last thing before I go, if you have any comments to make on this video or any of the other videos we've made here at CFC Markets, please feel free to leave a review on Google Reviews. Thank you very much.